Okay, so we're back live and hopefully this time everyone can hear me and everyone can hear you as well. Um, so as I said before, we're very happy to have Rohit and Hada today from Nature in Focus. And I think it'd be nice if we could start, just for the viewers who might not know you, um, to tell us a bit more about what Nature in Focus is, what you do and you know how it kind of came to life. So the journey of Nature in Focus started off in 2014. Uh, me and my partner Kalyan, uh, we were discussing about that there is no photographers, filmmakers, researchers, conservationists in, in Asia Pack where they can discuss ideas, uh, look at how they can collaborate together, look at how we can work on multiple different assignments parallelly. And that was a core idea of creating Nature in Focus. So yes, initially our focus was uh, largely on photography uh, because we called it Nature in Focus Photography Festival and uh, later everything got changed. So the journey has been very interesting. 2014, we started the festival. 2015, we introduced our photography awards. 2016, end, we introduced our portal. And uh, this portal is for the, uh, uh, for the ardent voice for the natural world storytellers. So there are a lot of content which has been published here. If I'm not wrong, more than 1,000 plus stories which you can find it here. And uh, last year we introduced a film festival also. So that is what is Nature in Focus. That's amazing. You, you're doing lots of different things. And actually, that makes me go to a question that someone sent for you. Um, do you think a picture is worth a thousand words? And what can pictures tell us that words can't and vice versa? I would always say that a picture can can say more than thousand words. Uh, it's all about that emotion which you are able to get looking at a picture and it tells you a story. So you may need to read thousand words or maybe two but a one picture can actually tell you the whole story behind it. So obviously I mean, it, it does tell more than thousand words. Do you have the same opinion as well, Hada? Oh, yes, I do. Absolutely. Uh, we spend uh, so much time looking at photographs. We get thousands of photographs. So in each week on a community platform that we have that is called Hive, where photographers come and upload their images. And uh, they vary uh, a simple pretty portrait of like a bumblebee all the way till, you know, feral dogs chasing elephants and, you know, in uh, outside national parks. So uh, the sheer variety um, itself is astounding and um, every photo has such a long journey on its own whether it is a portrait or whether it is that strong conservation message so yeah uh, I think um, I completely agree with what Ru is saying. Yeah I, I myself really love wildlife photography it's something that I, I find really relaxing and actually I feel like you can really get into that zone as well while doing it and it's just like you can forget everything yeah. and just look at that single tiny insect and just get lost in it um, I yeah, it's yes. a great feeling. <laughs> yeah. And um, another question that we've had from one of our viewers was, how do you pick the photos that win prizes in your competitions? What are the type of criteria you're looking for? Uh, so one, uh, I think today Nature and Focus Photography Awards is the largest in India for sure. We received more than 10,000 odd images. So what we did from day one is that we had multiple categories. So it's not like generic one category where everybody submits their images. So we broke it down to six different categories. And one category has been dedicated for the young photographers who are less than 17 years old. Number this is a jury. So we look at a jury, not only the wildlife photographers, but people who are from the other genre of photography itself or they are the journalist or from a different stream altogether. And then we get into looking at judging the photographs. And what we see here is that as you started from, that is that photograph is telling a story or not. So we focus a lot on the creativity. We look at how people are able to compose their images and what that photograph is able to tell us. So those are the very important parts Yes, natural history plays a role, but for us, creativity, the composition, the thought process plays a much bigger role. Rather, please add. 
yeah uh, to add to that also uh, julia uh, as a back end to give you an insight on what happens in the back end um, we all of us um, in the team and the jury we end up looking at these uh, shortlisted over again so that like for weeks together all we're thinking of is these images and uh, we analyze them thoroughly we are reading captions we are re- looking at locations where they were shot under what circumstances and also the jury um, uh, jury members are really experienced and they are all from various fields whether they are from uh, photography or from a uh, filmmaking background or some of them are even researchers journalists writers so all of them bring a table when they come to judge these images and all of them are aware of different issues and sometimes some issues are bigger than the others and uh, we have to use our platform because this is a huge platform once you put up a photograph there saying this is a winner that uh, image has its own um, weight from there so we kind of also have to look at all of these varied uh, criteria along with the basic uh, judging criteria that we have kind of a great experience for the team uh, for the team and for the jury and this is something we look forward to every year as much as it involves hundreds of hours of hard work it is it's a really really uh, great journey for us every time that's amazing that must be so interesting as well just receiving all these photos and going through it it's and you you have such a diversity like i follow your instagram very like every day i kind of see your posts and It's just it's just nice to see that diversity of wildlife and actually I was wondering if you could tell us as well you know you've had like a few editions what what are the themes that you've kind of seen emerging in terms of wildlife photography do you see more urban wildlife photography for example or is there like a specific theme that you feel has kind of like emerged in in recent years um so uh, you know it is also uh, something interesting that we see is the uh, indian photographers are uh, taking right so over the years it has started from people purely focusing on uh, action photography you know for using long lenses focusing on action shots hunts in the forest mostly taken from jeeps when they go on safaris and forests and there are lovely portraits of birds and things like that and all that has slowly moved on to trying more creative perspectives of everything so we go through these phases every year we see a new fashion you know <laughs> in terms of what people are trying so we've seen over the years uh, this surge in drone photography aerial photographs and then we see suddenly a burst of all camera trap images because camera trap images bring their own mm. you know uh, it's it's a very different field altogether and most of these people who are trying this are working closely with some forest department or you know some officers who have given them who've granted them that access to be able to set up a camera trap in a remote location to photograph what comes there because you know them otherwise those animals so we keep seeing these uh, mm-hmm. trends uh so every year there is a new trend uh but it's it's very interesting yeah i can imagine in terms of equipment as well it seems like it's it's all about drones as well at the moment you see a lot lot more of drone images than before yeah. <laughs> which is an interesting trend yeah that's true yeah um i'm going to ask you one more question so i'm going to ask this question to all of our guests today for the live q and a sessions and This question is what makes you optimistic about the future of nature? Okay, I'm going to answer that question in the way I think about it. It's people. Uh what I believe is that people can make the huge change. So, it's people who have spoiled it, it's people who only have to make the change. And we can make the change from our homes, from anything and everything what we really conscious and and cautious about what we are doing it how we are doing it and if if uh, if you look at because of covid the number of trees which are co- uh, coming coming up talking about the nature is healing nature is coming back i could see that a lot of people were getting connected with nature mm. so that connection with nature is very important and more and more number people uh, number of people have to understand that we are part of the same ecology it is not a different world this is not like a civil wildlife world it's one world so we start appreciating what nature gives to us 
and start doing things which are required to be done. And I'm I'm very positive that the things can change. Yeah, it's actually yeah, it's it's amazing to. I feel that we've been really also reconnecting more with nature in lockdown because you're you're staying in all the time. You don't get the access that you had before. Then every time you're outside, it just seems very special. Like I feel for me, I've been way more mindful of, you know, the flowers I see or like the birds you hear. I, I feel everyone is a bit more tuned in at the moment. Yeah, that's true. Is there anything else that you'd like to add? Any final word before we, we close the Q&A session? Yeah, so uh, we don't know if the festival will happen in, in 2020 or not, uh, but we have seen that festival has been growing uh, in leaps and bounds. We have seen the kind of articles which we are able to publish. And one thing which we realized that, that the visual narration of any of the things uh, has changed. So earlier it were, we were uh, narrating stories through words. From words it got into the visuals, which is the uh, static images and now it has moved to the videos so that is where we are so as an organization as an as an entity in nature and focus we decided that we need to look at it how we are able to narrate interesting stories of through the films and the videos so that's the journey which we started very recently and that's the reason we added a film festival so that we can find a lot of talent from india who have interest towards doing a wildlife filming and making interesting content and Nature and Focus also is going on the same path to look at it, how we are able to narrate interesting stories and showcase to the world that the kind of diversity we have, the kind of human-animal connection what we have it in India. There are a lot of stuff which is there in India which we're not aware of it. And we would intend or say we will surely put in a best possible effort to showcase what the real India is uh, to the world with all the work what we do. Amazing. Well, thank you both so much for coming in today and, you know, for everyone watching, we're going to have the live stream of our own festival tonight at 7 p.m. So just make sure to tune in. Uh, the link is on our YouTube channel, so you can just find the video there. And yeah, thank you so much.